Okay, we're gonna do something a little bit different today. Instead of going into what you need to do to grow your business quickly, I'm gonna share with you the three things that you actually need to stop doing right now. Hey there, I'm Nafisa Shireen and welcome to Living Forward TV, where we help you to create a thriving business you absolutely love all around your personal freedom. And each week we bring you extra resources that you can download and use in your business right away so that you can get results faster. Now, if you've had a successful career before starting your own business, and yet you can't seem to re replicate that success and duplicate your financial results, and you're not creating what you want in your business, and you're sitting there wondering like, oh my goodness, what gives? <laughs> Don't worry, you're not gonna be schlepping coffees or burgers anytime soon. Today's episode is for you. Let me start though by telling you that you're actually not alone. So many entrepreneurs, when they make that move from corporate to their own career, they go through it. I certainly went through it. It's way more common than you think. You're not the only one. You know, many of my clients, when they start working with me, they've come from a very successful career and they were rewarded for it financially. They gave everything to it. And yeah, the money was great, but it came at a great cost. Burnout, lack of fulfillment, health issues, stress, broken relationships. And it was just time for them to do something else, to build a meaningful business, to do something that matters, and to build their life around it and to build it around their freedom. And you know what? They figured if they could help someone else be successful, then even better, they can do it for themselves. But generally, it doesn't work out that way at first. You know, they find they're more frustrated, they're more tired, they're working harder and making way less money. If you're feeling me here, give me a thumbs up and then listen closely. You see, knowing how to show up in a job, even if your job required a lot of business knowledge and expertise, is not the same thing as knowing how to be an entrepreneur. And the very behaviors and actions and habits that contributed to your success in your prior career, if you get really, really honest with yourself, you'll admit that they are the same behaviors, actions, and habits that caused you to be burnt out and left you feeling unfulfilled. And I'm telling you, as an entrepreneur, those are the habits that will kill your business before you even get it started. Our handout today lists the seven corporate success habits that you need to ditch right away as an entrepreneur. And today in our episode, what I want to do is I want to focus on the top three so that we can go into them in a little bit more detail. Are you ready? Grab a pen and take some notes. This stuff's important. The first thing you want to let go of is perfectionism. Now, I know to stand out in your career, you probably couldn't afford to make mistakes, and any output that you did had to be up to standard and had to be up to quality, and in really big organizations, it had to conform to guidelines, right? And so you tested, you had things reviewed. If you had an approval chain, it went up the approval chain, you revised, reviewed, edited, and eventually the work got out. You know, I think fondly of one of the board members I reported to who was so exacting on how things had to be, not just on the accuracy of the information and the content, but on the presentation and how it looked, especially spreadsheets. Oh my goodness, column widths, colors, fonts had to be perfect. And he liked to see shadow boxes around any inserted images or tables in a document. I would obsess about getting all these fine details right because there was no way I was going to send him anything that wasn't perfect, not even a draft document. You know, I still kind of get a little twitch in the back of my eye today when I think about it. I mean, don't get me wrong. He certainly was one of the most influential people in my professional life. And um, if I could just take a moment, if you're watching this, you know who you are. And crazy perfect spreadsheets aside, I want you to know from the bottom of my heart that I have so much to thank you for. And I'll always be grateful for you challenging me to be the best me I could be. Now let's get back to our episode. The thing is, when I brought that level of perfectionism to my business, it nearly killed me. It prevented me from taking action, and of course that prevented me from making money. And I was on a path to being burned out and broke. And if you're focused on having everything perfect before you take action, you're gonna hold yourself back from putting yourself out there. You'll be so focused on what still needs to be done instead of what you really should be doing. And so what happens is you don't send that email. 
You don't make sales calls. You don't network. You don't charge what you're worth. And you keep working harder and harder and harder trying to get every little detail right so that when you do put yourself out there, it's perfect. Meanwhile, no money comes in. Now, that's not to say that you want to deliver subpar services or not have standards in your business, but please let go of perfection. Imperfect action is much more profitable than perfect paralysis. I mean, as an entrepreneur, good enough really is good enough. And remember this, in your career, you are paid to make it perfect. As an entrepreneur, you're paid when you make the sale. Now, the second most important thing you need to let go of is seeking approval and consensus. I think in a career that approval and consensus are what I consider to be like foundational core survival skills. You know, if you don't have approval from someone in authority, what you want to do isn't going to happen. And you certainly aren't going to risk doing it without approval. You're not going to risk your job. And then you also still need buy-in from your peers and other departments, even if what you're doing is none of their business. Why? Because it keeps relationships smooth and it builds support. And sure, while that political chess playing will keep you moving up the ladder, I mean, it is exhausting. Not to mention that your ideas never end up looking remotely like what they started with by the time everybody gets through it. Yet, annoying as that was in your career, that need for approval ends up being so ingrained that whether you realize it or not in your business, you're going to be looking for approval from someone. Now, how does it show up? Well, let's look at a few examples. Maybe you run your ideas by your mom or your sister or your friends or even your partner, but they may not know anything about your business, or perhaps they've never been an entrepreneur and don't understand. And they're always going to err on the side of you playing it safe, and they'll likely never give you that permission you're looking for. They're going to tell you what could go wrong or to be careful. And even if you take what they say with a grain of salt, Please don't underestimate what their perceived lack of approval is doing to your subconscious mind and what it's causing you to do or not do. I mean, that's why it's just so, so, so important to have coaches and masterminds. Really, it, it's so important as an entrepreneur because they'll remain neutral. I mean, the beauty about being an entrepreneur is that you get to decide you don't need permission from anyone. And the sooner you stop seeking it, the quicker you'll catapult your results. Now, will you make mistakes? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, as we said before, as long as you let go of perfection and you remain in control of the next decision, you will create the outcomes you want. And finally, the third and the most important thing you need to let go of is wanting to be liked. In your previous career, being likable would really get you far. And sometimes a likable personality would make up for a lack of competency. After all, if you are likable, people are much more willing to train you and help you get up to speed. And if you are likable, you'd have a real easy time building consensus around your initiatives. And if you are likable, you are much more likely to be promotable to management. But think about it for a moment. What does it really mean to be likable? Biting your tongue? Taking one for the team? Covering for a team member who doesn't pull their weight? Not speaking up when you know you need to? Saying yes when you want to say no? Hiding your true self? I mean, as an entrepreneur, if you're focused on being liked, you're going to try to be all things to everyone. And you already know that's exhausting. And yes, you know, you may end up having a whole lot of people liking you, but you're not going to have very many people buying from you. Now, you might wonder why that is. Well, think about it. If you're concerned about being liked, you'll hold back from asking for the sale. You'll hold back the real you. You may not be comfortable charging what you're worth or setting a boundary with a client, or maybe you'll allow people to pick your brains because you want to be nice to them. All of these things will cost you time, money, and credibility. And if you lose credibility, it costs you more money and time. The need to be liked, I think, is the biggest stumbling block that entrepreneurs face, and it really holds them back from taking much needed action. And look, I get it. It's not easy. As humans, you know, we want to belong. And let me share with you that that was, for me, the hardest part about becoming an entrepreneur. I really struggled with it. But here's the thing. Your ideal clients really do want to see the real you. And if you can forget about being liked, and yeah, you're going to alienate a few people. Don't worry about it because you're going to attract a lot more of the right people. And when you do, you'll show up as a powerful leader in your business with strong boundaries. And that's going to make you a lot of money. 
you really can recreate the financial success you had in your previous career. You can even exceed it. Just remember, though, that these so-called success habits were all designed to help you succeed in someone else's world. And that's why it's time to ditch them, because now it's your turn. It's your world. It's your time. Are you ready? If you found today's episode helpful, please share it with someone who you know needs it and subscribe to my channel. And I really want to hear from you. Leave me a comment below and let me know what you found most helpful today, what you most resonated with. And if you have any questions or you need more help, then I'd like to invite you to join me in the free Living Forward Facebook community. That's where I come to you live each week on after the episode, and I take your questions. And it's also a great place to network and build your business. To join us, all you have to do is go to livingforwardcommunity.com, click the Join Now button, and I'll see you on the inside.